Hello students of geometry, welcome to 4.7 Triangles and Coordinate Proof. You can find it on these pages in your book. The only new term here is coordinate proof. What does that look like? Let's jump right into it. So the first blanks here to start off should say coordinate proof. Uses figures in the coordinate plane and algebra. to prove geometric concepts. And then right here, this is the, I think the most important thing to know for this lesson. Good steps to follow when doing coordinate proof. So let's just write these steps down. My first step when I'm doing a coordinate proof is to use the origin as a vertex or center of the figure. I'm writing these whole steps out because I think it's really important to remember all four of these things. Step two is to do this. Place at least one side. This is if it's possible. All this stuff is if it's possible, but place at least one side on an axis. So on the x-axis or on the y-axis. And step three, if you can, keep things positive. I'm a positive guy. Hopefully you're a positive guy or girl yourself, but keep the figure within the first quadrant. That's going to keep everything positive if possible. So keep within first quadrant if possible. Purposely not writing complete sentences here just to, to make things quicker to write. And the fourth step to use coordinates that make calculations as easy as possible. Use coordinates that make calculations as easy as possible. And it's true, I'm going to have some, I think, some really funny, some of my favorite math jokes as we go along in this relatively short and quick lesson. So example one, position and label right triangle RGT on a coordinate plane. So I am going to write down my thought process over here and I'm going to place it as I go over here. So I'm going to place, since it's a right triangle, I'm going to place the right angle at the origin. I think that makes the most sense to do that. So in its right triangle RGT, one of my coordinates would be R then. I'm going to say right here that this is R. This is R at 0, 0. And then for, it doesn't say how long these things are. Uh, it doesn't say that the side lengths are 3 or 4 or 6.2 or anything like that. So really these other points are arbitrary, but it's a, a right triangle. So I'm going to say, I'll go with, oh, G right here. And I'll go with T up here. Notice my right angle then would be right on there. And then I'm going to, to make the actual triangle. So let me draw some lines in here. So there's that side. We would have this side and this side. Now I have a right triangle drawn on a coordinate plane. How long is that side? from R to G? Well, I really don't know. I know it's on the x-axis here, so the y value is 0. But I don't know what that x value is. I don't know how far, so I'm just going to call it A. Use a variable. T, the same sort of thing going on here. Let me erase that a second so I can write the whole coordinate point. So T, I know it's on 0 for the x-coordinate, or I know it's at 0 for the x-coordinate, but I don't know where it is for the y coordinate. I'm not sure how high up it is. I, I'm not given that information here. This is coordinate proof where we're using variables to represent how long these things could be. So it's not necessarily the same as this side. I didn't say it was isosceles, so we'll have to use another variable here. I'm going to go with B. And so my thought process there was this. I was not told that it's isosceles. So I must use 
different variables for the coordinates of G and T. And so I have successfully placed a right triangle labeled RGT on a coordinate plane. I think this was the best way to do this. You didn't have to place it at the origin and you didn't have to have a side here and here, but that's gonna make it easiest to prove things about a triangle like that. So right here, I got a joke about hypotenuse. You can read that if you wanna see the, the joke there, but what do you call a bathroom being used on an airplane? A hypotenuse, da Okay, example two. Do you get it? I hope you get it. Think about it. A high pot in use. <laughs> example two. Name the missing coordinates of isosceles triangle A R L. Oh look, it's Ariel. Which brings me to my next joke. What do mermaids wear? Algae bras. Ha! <laughs> yep. That's what they wear. So we got in the missing coordinates of isosceles triangle ARL. If it's isosceles, then I know that two sides have to be equal, at least two sides. And it looks like that's clearly on the picture the only ones that could be equal to each other in length. So right here, what are the missing coordinates? What are the question marks? If this is A from there to there, I know right here it's still on the x-axis. I know the y value then would have to be zero. So I'm gonna say that this one is a comma zero. That's the only thing that makes sense to say there. For, for r, this coordinate right here, that clearly has to be zero for the x value. So r would be zero b. And this one, if it's isosceles, it's gonna be the same length from here to here as it is from here to here since these things are congruent these parts would also have to be congruent that means right here a would have to be at you'd be going back a or negative a and this is still zero for the y value so that coordinate is negative a zero if you want to make a little extra note this is true since l is at A0 and the triangle is isosceles. So that's the case because of that. And then our final example here, example three, using coordinate proof, prove that the three segments joining the midpoints of the sides of a right isosceles triangle form another right isosceles triangle. Hmm, interesting. So let's make an isosceles triangle on this coordinate plane to start. Notice I'm trying to use quadrant one if I can. That's what I've done here. And I'm gonna go with blue, I'll make a horizontal segment going this way. And then I wanna make another segment. That's the same length as that one going this way. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. So that looks like about the same to me from there to there is the same as there to there. If you wanted to measure it, that would be a, a good idea, but I'm just trying to keep this video as short as I can. So if I look at, at that, that looks like an isosceles triangle. And what we're saying here is that the midpoints of this isosceles triangle form another isosceles triangle. It is a right isosceles triangle. I purposely made it so that it was a right isosceles triangle. If you connect the midpoints, which I would say be there, there, and there, connect those. We're trying to prove that that's another isosceles triangle. So like right there, right there, right there. So I'm saying if this is the midpoint here, that would be the same distance there and there. This would be the same length here and here, and this one the same here as it is here. Measuring that I think would have been a, a good idea, but uh, again, I'm just trying to save us some time here. So can we prove that that in fact is true, that this side and this side are also going to be equal to each other? Well, let's label, well, let's, let's go through some steps here. So I'm going to, with the right isosceles triangle, this is how I started with this. 
I put the legs along the axes. Those are the same length. If it's isosceles, that has to be the case. So I'm saying from here to here is the same distance or the same length as it is from here to here. Now it didn't give me letters to use, so I'm just going to pick some letters to use. I'm going to say this is point X down here at the origin at 0, 0. I'm going to say that this, and I'm going to go back to my, let me just circle that a second here. I'm going to go back to my thought process back here, that I want to use coordinates that make calculations as easy as possible. So I could call this 0, or I could call this something like A and 0. But to make it as easy as possible, since I'm going to cut that in half, I don't want to deal with the fraction if I don't have to, I'm going to say that this is 2 times some value a in 0. That would make this point right here, I think my voice almost cracked there, that make this point just plain old a in 0 if it's the midpoint. That would have to be the case. Same sort of thing I'm going to do up here. I'm going to call this point z and say that's at 0 to b. And actually, I, I don't even need to use B, because remember, this is isosceles. So this is the same length as this. So that means this could also be 2A. And that would make this point right here, which I'm going to call B, capital B, that would be 0, comma, A. It would be halfway in between the 0 and the 2A value. And so if this is a right isosceles triangle right here, well, I, I think I'm not quite ready to say that yet, but that's what I'm trying to get to, that this is going to be a right angle. So let's think about how can I prove that this, or what this coordinate is. I'm going to call this coordinate A, but I need to prove that that's actually at AA, -A, that this is not slanting this way a little bit or slanting this way a little bit. I need to prove that's actually at AA. -A. If I do that, then I will be able to prove that this is an isosceles triangle. So step one, what I've done in the coordinate plane there is, is good to go, but I know that A, by the midpoint theorem or midpoint formula, I know that the coordinates of that would be 0 plus 2A divided by 2. That's the sum of the X values for Y and Z. And it would be the sum of the Y values for Y and Z for the second coordinate point, so 2A plus 0 divided by 2. And 0 is not going to affect that at all. So I know that the coordinate of A is just 2A divided by 2, which would just be A. And 2A divided by 2 here, also just A. So that is the coordinate points for point A, little a, comma, little a. Now if that's the case, then we know that the length from here to here has to be, it's going from 0 up to A, that's going to be A right there. And it's going from 0 up to A for the X values, also A right there. So I can label that in my picture. This has to be the length A, and this has to be length A. That means I could put four marks here and four marks here. Those two things would have to match up. They would have to be congruent. So that's step two. We can say that AB is equal to AC. And both of those things are equal to little a. And that shows that triangle ABC is isosceles. So we're trying to prove that it not only forms another isosceles triangle, but that it's also a right isosceles triangle. So that's one of two parts there. So the third part, I'm just going to explain this in a kind of a paragraph or a a sentence type proof way instead of a two column proof way. So since A and C have the same X coordinates, and A and B have the same Y coordinates, If we look over here, that's true. A and B have the same y-coordinate right there. They're both A. And A and C 
had the same x coordinate. They're both a right there and right there. So since that's the case, that means that angle BAC, this would have to be horizontal, this would have to be vertical. That means angle BAC is a right angle. And from that you could say therefore, my little symbol for therefore, those three dots in a triangle there, triangle ABC is right and isosceles. And my final joke right here, what did the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. <laughs> it's like the zero put a belt on and became an eight. Okay. Math jokes aside, all that fun aside, hope that helps you. Hope you have a good day. Go back and review as needed. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.